Hello, this is Talon Peterson again. Uh, this is the fourth piece of the module on model evaluation in our biodiversity informatics training curriculum. Uh, we were talking about receiver operating characteristics and AUCs, uh, areas under curves. We had just contrasted a very good prediction with a very bad prediction. And essentially what we were seeing was that uh, the area under the curve approaches 1 for a very good prediction and approaches 0.5 for a prediction that's no better than random. Um, now, you will see rock AUC tests in most modern papers on uh, testing predictions of niche models or distribution models. I will argue with you uh, that this is not a good idea, that this test is not appropriate uh, for the, this sort of question. Why? Well, first of all, notice that we have uh, this emphasis on commission error. The entire horizontal dimension is determined by essentially absence data. Okay, you remember that commission error was the ratio of incorrectly predicted absence data to all absence data. Well, where do we get the absence data when some of the absence data are not related to the suitability of the environment? So that's, to begin with, a big question. Uh, how do we measure this? Now, as a workaround, we can imagine plotting a lot of points on here. And that's akin to, a lot of absence points, I should say, that's akin to uh, taking the proportional area that is predicted absent by the model. And again, this runs from 0 to 1. Okay? So that's a workaround. It's not ideal, and we could talk about for quite a while uh, whether that's a good idea. But that's, that's one complication that I mentioned, I mentioned to you. Now, a second one is notice that the commission error related axis and the omission error related axis have the same scaling in Rock AUC. And so, in many senses, we've weighted commission and omission errors equally. That's a big problem because, you, as you already know, Omission error refers to presence data, which we generally have reason to believe in, and commission error refers to absence data, which we should have a lot of worries about. Okay, so those are some problems with the idea of Rock AUC. There's a workaround to the weighting as well. We could, for example, rescale these axes. Uh, we'll come to those ideas in the next uh, module. Another problem with Rock AUC is that it depends on having a prediction over this entire spectrum. Some of the, some of the uh, algorithms that you'll use for, for uh, estimating niches and predicting distributions give you that from a prediction of a very small area to a prediction of a very large area. But other algorithms may give you only a piece of the spectrum like this. And if that's the case, how do we calculate the area under the curve when the curve doesn't, uh, isn't characterized? And so those algorithms end up getting penalized by this area, not because they're not good predictions, but rather because they don't characterize that part of the curve. Yet another point is that there are parts of the rock curve that are, I would argue, not relevant. For example, here, this point is a model prediction that when challenged with independent occurrence data, fails half of the time. It has a 50% omission rate. That, to me, is not a very good model prediction. And so in that sense, Parts of this curve are, are really things that I don't want to pay attention to and I don't want to use to weight my, uh, my models. So, 
I've given you a bunch of concerns about, about the ROC um, paradigm as it's usually implemented. And I hope that is enough to give you pause before you read a ROC AUC uh, result in a paper and believe that it means a good model. A final comment is how do we know that this is better than random? You will see in the literature fairly common the idea that uh, AUCs between 0.8 and 0.9 are excellent and between 0.7 and 0.8 are very good and between 0.5 and 0.6 are not very good. Well, those are, are situation dependent. Uh, those are not very reliable. What should be done is some sort of subsampling. It's usually a bootstrap to ask what's the confidence interval around this curve and consequentially, what's the confidence interval around that AUC of 0.9? So you'll, you should be looking for a bootstrap manipulation that tells you whether the uh, AUC is significantly different from 0.5, which is the random expectation. But more generally, I hope that I've convinced you that rock AUCs are not an appropriate, or at least not a very simple approach to evaluating the quality of niche and distribution models.